All right. Okay. Full speed ahead. Now we're moving into the service of Episcopal consecration. Give God a praise. At this time, we're going to ask uh, uh, Elder Pastor John to please come and stand before us. We'll call on your wife later, but right now we're going to take you through the ringer. Your wife don't need to be by you while we're ringing you. A amen. Listen, um, we've been knowing this young man quite some time. When he was working with uh, his pastor, apostle, even when he was down at Snow Hill, we, we just tracked him. We just tracked him. And, and um, we had opportunity. Did I license him? Did I license you, sir? I know I ordained you. And I, I know uh, in the school you received your master's degree. And you're working on your doctorate now. And you, and you got a campus. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> so I just wanted to let the people know that this just didn't happen. This didn't happen. And so uh, when he came back in the area, I, I saw him operating. And, and the Lord told me what to do. He didn't ask, but this came as an appointment. You can be appointed uh, from the chief apostle. So God spoke to me, and I talked with him about it. And this is why he's standing here. And we are mapping out some things for him. And we were just grateful uh, that God has anointed him for this day. From the day that you were born. That this is the day. This is the night that you've been uh, anointed for. Now, because of the fact that um, his church that he started, Rivers of Life Church, join in with the Eagle's Nest ministry. We wanted them to participate. So what I want to do is ask um, Deacon Elton Edwards, he's in the house, to come and present him to the Chief Apostle representing your church. Let's go right ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Your grace, by the will of God, I, Deacon Elton Edwards of Rivers of Life Church, present this candidate, Pastor John H. Langley, to you for public consecration to this sacred office. Amen. 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 Now we'll go into the charge. The Church of God and the presiding prelate, myself, has expressed confidence in you, in your character, in your devotion of Christ in the church, and your ability to direct the affairs and promote the general interests of the entire church, and that the church has singularly honored you by selecting you or presenting you to this office to me. Apostle Paul warned that a bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Can you teach? Okay. All right. No, I just won't know. I'll, I know, but I just want you to say so. Moreover, somebody say moreover. moreover. He must have a good report of them which are without. At least he fall into a reproach and the snare of the devil. As a bishop, you must adhere to the following duties. I'll just name a few. You can read them later, okay? I'm sure you read it. Obey and defend the constitution of the church. Function as administrative head of the ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Seek out and discover in cooperation with your congregation a super pastor for each congregation under your care if that is relevant for you. To encourage ministerial improvement and leadership training. Uh, inspire others to spiritual growth, other pastors, spiritual growth. Encourage visitation amongst the pastors that you're over in the home hospital, etc. Submit yourself to your superior in the church with all prayer for humility and by example teach those under your charge to the same, etc. 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 Inquiry. 
John. And as much as the Holy Scripture joined that no man be placed hastily in supervision of the affairs of God's holy church in order that those here may know your mind and, and purpose concerning this sacred office, will you, in the fear of God, answer the question we ask you in the name of Christ and in the church? I will. John, will you endeavor to live soberly, righteously, and godly as a bishop in the church so that you may be an example to all others in Christian living? I will, by the help of God. Will you instruct those who come under your charge in the word of God to the edification of the whole church? I will do so, the Lord being my helper. Will you give diligence to faithfully perform all the duties assigned to you as bishop of the church, auxiliary bishop of the church, as directed by your superior? I will, by the help of God. Will you ever seek in the true humility and to deal justly and kindly with your brethren in the ministry and with all others over which you shall be placed as bishop? I will do so by the help and grace of God, the Holy Spirit being my strength. Sir, will you turn and face the congregation to the saints of God? Do you, under God, accept this man into this office, and will you give him your cooperation, support, prayers, and seek to carry out the responsibility of this office? God bless you. All right, sir, you can stand right there. Next, we're going into uh, the Episcopal Investor. So now we will ask Bishop Mark Rowland to come. We're getting ready to dethrone him and then set him back up. Are there any individuals that he have chosen that will assist? We got the, the yeah, okay, okay. The Cossack, the robe which is worn during the service is the symbol of an elder and servant. The bishop is first and foremost a servant and one among his brethren. Yeah, you, you good right there. They, and the censure. Excuse me, excuse me. Let's wait till each time they serve him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
censure. This garment is a symbol of Christ. It speaks of the bishop's willingness to wash his brethren's feet, pursuant to the example of his Lord. This white linen garment is a symbol of the priesthood. Aaron's epod is found in the book of Leviticus and is a reminder to the bishop that his role as celebrant and worship leader is prominent in the total mandate of the office. This garment is a symbol of a prophet. The bishop of the church becomes the chief defender of the faith and the preacher of the doctrines in his jurisdiction. This is one symbol that sets him apart from elders, for he alone wears this mantle of office. The tippet. The tippet is the symbol of a slave. It is the tippet that binds the bishop to his church. Inscribed on the tippet is the seal of the church fellowship and the seal of the bishop. They are the symbols of jurisdiction or assignment. The tippet signifies that the bishop is a man under authority. Tzuchetto. The, the bishop's indoor covering, a small semi-spherical headdress skull cap worn by the bishop. It's representing a tight covering for the priest's head.
the pectoral cross. The cross of gold is hung around the bishop's neck as a symbol of his imprisonment for Christ. The bishop is hereby officially inducted into the College of Bishops. The ring, the symbol of priestly authority. Lastly, the crozier, a symbol of the shepherd's staff given to Moses as he exiled from Egypt. It's the symbol of authority and strength. Now, as we prepare to lay hands upon consecration prayer, but let me ex explain to you what we are laying hands on him for. We are consecrating him in the Eagles Nest Church ministry as an auxiliary bishop. Let me explain the auxiliary bishop. It is an ecclesiastical apostolic office that is appointed or designated by the presiding prelate. This position endeavors to continue to develop and secure the auxiliary bishop ecclesiastical maturity. An auxiliary bishop is assigned by the presiding prelate to assist, to assist the prelate in the pastoral care and administration of the diocese or the district or the eagle's nest. Auxiliary Bishop helped the minister of the sacraments, especially Episcopal confirmation. Other often representing uh, represent the presiding bishop at various types of function. Although an auxiliary bishop had the fullness of holy order consecration, he or she does not have the same degree of jurisdiction or governing power as the district or the diocese bishop. This person does not have the automatic right of secession until he is fully appointed as a district or diocese bishop. The right of authority can be changed at the discretion of the prelate. The Eagles Nest Church men and the auxiliary bishop can be given charge of either specific territory or wherever he is needed to assist the presiding prelate. This will continue his training, his maturity, and he's a type of adjective or assistant to the bishop. So we are preparing now to lay hands upon him. As the College of Bishops, Apostles, if you come around, we want to ask his wife, will you escort his wife beside uh, as we pray? We, we are consecrating him, but his wife need to be beside him. So you, both of you can face, face me. Thank you. Um, and the College of Bishops to come around, the apostles. And we're going to lay hands upon you. You all right, son? Good, good. You all right, daughter? Good, good. I need you to get on your knees. <laughs> Help me. 
help her out. Please help her. Because God knows you're going to need to be on your knees as a prayer warrior for this next elevation. I, before I lay my hands on you, listen. Satan, the devil, is regimented. Whatever rank you hold, that's the rank he's going to send after you. He will not send a rank of a pastor at you now. He's going to the next level power, regimental power that he has. And this is the thing, it's very important to remember. You don't need to call yourself an apostle or bishop if God has not ordained it to be so. Because the devil don't care whether you call him or God call you, he's going to send the same rank. And if you're not prepared and qualified uh, for that rank, then you're going to be outranked. And that's why so many quit, turn around, fall down. And so we praying for you as, we, as God elevates you to have this anointing that whatever and whoever the devil sent at you, hallelujah, you rank. And you can tell him you can have that coat in the name of Jesus. As we lay hands upon, let's lay a hand, Father, in your name right now, Father, we'll say, hey, glory! We lay our hands upon this son in the name of Jesus. It's been appointed for this office. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Except you build the house. Our building's in vain, except you watch the city. Our watching is in vain. But God, we thank you now for building the house and for watching the city, for ranking and preparing us, preparing this son for the work and the ministry as a priest. Hallelujah. The kingdom. Anoint him, God. Mount him up. Stripe him up. Give him the wisdom. Give him the patience. Oh, that fresh anointing. That bishop anointing. I speak it right now. In the name of Jesus, cover him, God, for the work, for the work, for the work, for the work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare him for the battle, for the battle, for the battle. Hey, God, and give him a dance for the victory, for the victory, for the victory. Hallelujah, God, and use him. Use him, God, in a mighty way. Use him. Use him in a mighty way. Beyond his imagination, launch him into the deep. And now God with his wife by his side, we lay our hands upon her to help me, God, in the name of Jesus. Give her a fresh anointing to be what she need to be for him. Hallelujah. Having the wisdom and the counsel in the name of Jesus. Go anoint her, God. Anoint her. Fit her. Hallelujah. For this office as the wife to help me of this auxiliary bishop we declare it right now in the name of God, jesus in the name of jesus Woo, glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah thank you god I count it done i count it done I count it done for you in jesus name you may rise put your hand together with the sense of god to our Holy Communion celebration. We're going to ask um, Bishop, our co-consecrator, to come um, to serve communion to both of them. We're going to ask um, Bishop Captain Moore to read our scripture, the blessing of the element, Bishop Mark Rowden, and the serve candidates, Bishop Willie Pennington, in that order. Eleventh chapter, starting from verse twenty-three.
for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which I broke for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, said, This cup is the New Testament and my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eating and drinking damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with this world. That's how we have verses 23 through 32. The body and the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Father, before you serve the communion to your disciples, you blessed it. So now, Lord, we ask that you would take this bread, take this wine, change it from a natural to a supernatural. Forgive them of any trespass, shortcomings, that they may be worthy even right now as they drink of this cup and eat of your body. We thank you and we bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. And they took the bread. And they broke it. And they ate all of it. This is his body, which was broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, they drank together all of it in remembrance of his death and his shed blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it is time for the presentation of the Holy Order and Episcopal John H. Langley, now as Bishop John H. Langley, receive you, receive ye, Bishop John H. Langley. Turn around and face now. Come on, praise God. Why are you praising God? Under this new title, he's going to make his first walk under the new cal uh, title office as bishop. And as people begin to praise God, I want you to walk all the way to the end and come back as Bishop John H. Thank you. Bishop John H. Langley. Here you go. Go 
meet your husband, give him a hug and congratulate him. Amen. If you can, just give them a few remarks, Bishop. <laughs> Bishop John H. Langley, the Bishop. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. This is a true saying, that he that desire the office of a bishop desireth a good work. Amen. I'll say it again. This is a true saying that if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Note there, friends, it says work. God. Work. Work. While our works prepare the stage for moments of consecration. Walking in the bishopric is not a reward for works done, but it is a charge for works that must be done. Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is yet day. The night will come when no man can work. He teaches us to continue to work. What does he say? Greater works shall ye do in my name. So at a time when everyone, it seems that, that work is going out the window and we're having dress up parties, God is still calling us to work. But what is a working preacher without a working pastor? What is a working pastor without an auxiliary bishop. What is an auxiliary bishop without a presiding prelate? Bless your son. The answer is nothing. We are nothing without our fathers in the ministry. Amen. Hear me, I said we are nothing without our fathers in the ministry. At a time where there is so much fanfare, where people want to lead without following. I'm humbled and grateful to know that the Eagles Nest Church Ministries Fellowship is not like the Corinthian church. Paul tells the Corinthian church, you have 10,000 instructors, but you have not many fathers. Today, I want to pay homage and respect to my father. Amen. In May of 2020, God speak, spoke to me after Bishop J. Delano Ellis died. 
And he said to me, John, don't let all of the Pauls die. And you, Timothy, are not in place. I immediately got on the phone and called Bishop. I said, I'm leaving South Carolina and I'm coming back home. And I want to come back to the Eagle's Nest. And since then, I've been here. And I'm grateful to be a son of the Eagle's Nest Church Ministries Fellowship. I want to say thank you to all of my friends, to our homeless, who preached just like that in a dressing room at our wedding. He did. We thank God for him. But then all of my friends that are here and family that have come, I say thank you. But most importantly, thank you to my wife. Amen. We've been married four months. <laughs> and her long. name has changed three times in four months. That's a long time. <laughs> she went from Miss T to Miss Langley, from Miss Langley to First Lady, and now First Lady to Elect Lady. All right. But after all the titles are gone, at the bare minimum, she's my lady. That's it. And I'm grateful for her. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I'm done, I'm leaving. But the greatest call of any preacher is to preach Jesus Christ. If you preach anything other than Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul says, let that man be accursed. The call changes. The appointment changes. But the message. <laughs> the message stays the same. And so even with all of these Episcopal garments, crosses and rings, the message is still the same. Yeah, the same. He came. Yep. He lived. <laughs> woke the dead. Opened the blinded eyes. Turned water into wine. <laughs> they beat him in the city courts. Ripped flesh from his bones. Carried a hill up across up a hill called Golgotha to a place on that hill called Calvary. Hung him high, stretched him wide, buried his head in the locks of his shoulder. The sun refused to shine. The rocks began to cry. The earth began to quake. Broke him off a cross. Put him in a bald man's tomb. The devil thought it was over. They were laughing and having a good time. His spirit left the body, went down into the antediluvian world, preached to those that were in prison, told them about grace, told them about salvation. Oh, but early, early was Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands and guess what y'all he's coming back every eye shall see him Gabriel's gonna crack the sky Jesus is gonna come out the dead in Christ is gonna rise but those of us that remain those of us that still here those of us that still alive we're gonna be Call up! Call up! Call up! All right, Bishop. All right, Bishop. All right, Bishop.
Great day. Great day. <laughs>